Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be revisiting a topic that I first made a video about in July 2016. So it's almost exactly eight years to the month, it's just a little bit after the eight year anniversary of that video, and I thought it would be really fun today to go back and revisit this topic, French words that I can't pronounce. A lot has changed since that point. That was very much the beginning stages of my French learning journey. I had not lived in France yet. Now I have lived in France for five years, not currently, but I have lived in France for five years. I am definitely fluent in French. I have dual nationality even. I will link a video here if you want to watch that journey, but so much has changed, and yet I still am a person who did not start speaking French until my early 20s. That means my French is never going to be perfect. So today we are going to be revisiting this topic, and I'm going to tell you some words that I still, still, still have trouble pronouncing in French. I did try to pick words that were very practical, so if you like Google hard words to say in French, you might come across these like random words that nobody ever really has an occasion to use. What I really wanted to cover on this list was stuff that I use on at least a semi-regular basis, things that are actually words that I come across in my conversations that stump me every time I come across them, or at least most of the time. Let's start with the most obvious one, the one that everybody complains about, and the one that I still complain about sometimes, and that's the R, except that my R's actually have gotten much better, at least I think so, but anytime you have words with multiple R's, separated by vowels and kind of mixed in with different sounds, it can get challenging, specifically when you use the conditional forms of words that have R's in them. So for example, préféré. So already préféré, the infinitive form, is not exactly the most fluid, but when you do conditional, je préféré, I don't even know. Was that even close? I know native speakers will swallow some of those sounds. You don't have to hit every R, but I don't know which ones that I'm supposed to pronounce and swallow and which ones I skip over. I've tried like crunching it together in some ways and like testing it out on French speakers and they tell me it's not right, but I don't know how to make it better. I can get my point across, but it definitely does not sound right. Another example of a word with too many R's is the word for purr. Now I know not everybody has an occasion to use purr that often, but as a cat mom who is obsessed with her cats, I use it quite frequently, actually. The word is ronronné. As I say it, I cringe, but I cannot make it sound better. I can say words now that start with R a lot better than I could when I made that original video. Sometimes I still get a little stuck on an R, but typically it is fluid enough and easy enough to say, even if it's not perfect. But ronronné, where you had the two R's back to back, I don't even want to conjugate that. Like, don't even, I don't even want to go there. All right, I have lowered this shade a little bit because the sun is just doing all sorts of things today. So we're gonna go with a little bit more of an indoor light setting. Next, we have to talk about nasal sounds. So as a general rule, I'm pretty happy with how I can pronounce nasal sounds now. I definitely still get stuck once in a while or mispronounce something a little bit, but I have improved so much. I remember a long time ago when I was still very, very much at the beginning stages, so probably around the same time that I made that video, I remember one time someone commented that my cheeks were super pink and I wanted to say that it was the wind and I said c'est le vent and they thought it was very funny. <laughs> Mistakes like that don't usually happen to me now and even if I will say a nasal sound wrong, I usually will hear it and be able to correct it and make sure the person understands what I was trying to say so that people don't think that wine has made my face flush instead of the wind. There are still some moments when I struggle though. For example, if you have two different nasal sounds right back to back, that is still a little bit challenging. For example, if I want to order a white wine, vin blanc, which half the time when I'm speaking kind of quickly or not really paying attention, I will say vin blanc or vin blanc, mixing the sounds, or usually they kind of mimic the first sound. So if vin is an I-N nasal sound, the blanc will come out more like blanc. It can be very difficult to make those two distinct sounds right back to back. I've also discovered it can be very difficult when there's a nasal sound in a T-I-O-N word. So the very commonly used attention, when you want someone to be careful, so like careful, that's hot, attention c'est chaud. It's very difficult to say attention or tension, that's also a word. Um, Obtention. It doesn't sound right. I know it's not right. The sion is not hard. Émotion. Définition. It's not the sion part that I struggle with. It's really the en sion. En sion. Again, it's, it's, it's those two sounds right back to back. It's very difficult to do. And in moments when you need to tell someone to be careful, it's not usually a moment where you want to stop and like think about the sounds before you say them. So I just have to just 
just kind of go with whatever, whatever sounds come out and usually it's understood. Next on my list is the word for a tea kettle in French, which is wiwa. I've had many occasions to need to use this word. I drink tea, but I also drink coffee. I've drunk French press coffee where you use a kettle to boil the water. There's many, many situations that you might find if you live in a French speaking country where you might need to say wiwa, and it's not a fun one. This comes from the word for to boil in French, which is bouillir, which is another one that's very difficult to say. In my original video, I talked about about combining the e uh sound with e, like feuille, or a lot of people say accueillir is difficult to say. It's not the easiest word to say, but my gosh, bouillir is so much harder to say. <laughs> and of course, I have to talk about the famous ou sound in French, so ou versus u. The biggest struggle about this one at the beginning was just hearing the difference. I literally could not hear the difference, or if I could hear it, I couldn't pinpoint exactly what that difference was in order to recreate it. Now I can definitely hear the difference. It's probably not as stark in my ears as it is to a native speaker, but nine times out of 10, probably 99 times out of 100, I can hear the difference. And most most of the time, most of the time, I can produce the right sound. Sometimes I will mess it up. There's one set of words that always messes me up though, and that is the difference between dessus and dessous. And that is very important because it's literally the opposite, and often you can't quite tell from context. A lot of the other, you know, word comparisons that you can make, du and du, for example, bouche versus bouche, I mean, depending on what subject you're talking about, you probably can figure it out. But dessus and dessous are used in situations oftentimes where the key word for the context is that word, and you need to be able to hear it. And I definitely struggle to be able to say the right one, and oftentimes I will demonstrate, like use my hands to demonstrate if I'm trying to say something is above or below something, just to make sure that I'm understood, just in case I say the wrong one. Last, let's talk about a word that is very important for a traveler, and that is the word for airport, which is aéroport. If I slow this one down, I can say it. If I take each syllable as it comes and very carefully pronounce it, it's okay. But oftentimes when I'm talking about the airport, it's not exactly those moments when you want to stop and meticulously sound out your vowels. And nine times out of 10, when I'm saying this in a sentence, I will bug and have to stop halfway through the word and restart and try and just get each one of those vowels right. A -e -ro -bo. It's so smooth when French speakers say it. It is so beautiful and smooth and sounds like the easiest thing in the world. And if I say it too quickly, it will either get all jumbled up or it'll sound like aéroport, which is usually actually probably what comes out, which could be the English influence, but I think it's also just because it's easier to make that one vowel sound than the two separate A, E with the accent. And then half the time I'll mess up the bo on the end as well. I think just by the time I get to that part of the word, I just, whatever sound, comes out is just the one that I'm sticking with, then it's usually not right. So yeah, there is my update to that very fun video from eight years ago. Maybe in another eight years, I will make another sequel to this and we will see what words make it to that list. <laughs> Maybe some of these same words, probably some of the same sounds. Maybe I will have discovered even more little gems in the French language that are impossible for me to pronounce. Let me know in the comments below if you are a French learner, if you also struggle with some of these, if you also struggle with some of the ones from my past video, I will leave a link. It is very much old style Andrea videos so keep in mind that my video style has changed over time as it should and uh, you might prefer that one or you might absolutely hate it but it is dated as you probably know language learning is very much a lifelong journey you are constantly improving your skills learning new things realizing something that you didn't know before that's what makes it so much fun when I go back and watch those old videos talking about French trying to pronounce French that's even how I came up with this idea to do this video today is that I was watching some of those old French videos and it's so fun to see where I've come from from where I started to hear myself try to pronounce French things and to have a different accent then than I do now. And maybe in another eight years, I will look back on this video and it'll be the same thing. So I would love to continue to make videos talking about French, speaking French some as well. Obviously this is an English language channel, but I have made French videos before. Maybe I will make another French video in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon in another video. A bientôt.